To the panel discussion for our session 15 on day four. <laughs> Apologies, I've just lost my screen. There we go. Welcome back, Cosman. Welcome back, Hager and Dr. Lee. We have a wonderful discussion ahead of us, and I've posted it just up above there. Um, I'll read it out for us. The hybridization of spiritual and scientific methodologies for an overall awakening of mankind. Simply put, <laughs> how science and spirituality can be combined for a greater impact. Now, I would love to speak firstly to Cosman, please, and I'd love to invite you to speak into this question. And what, what is, in your opinion, the number one way this can be achieved? Uh, as far as I discovered through the practice, uh, the the vocabulary and the words that are used by different lineages and different traditions they are different and in a, i don't know in the human mind can create a little bit of confusion but at the core of uh, these concepts we can find that uh, many aspects and many practices and uh, in different words uh, are bringing us to the same um, <clears throat> Uh, the same final destination and this connection between the practices which was very strict for example in, in India and if we look in Tai Chi for example they that were very very strict and uh, I've met a Japanese guy I think yes a Japanese guy in India who were who was exilated from um, from, I don't know, I think there are monasteries in Tai Chi, I don't know exactly. And uh, because he was com he was practicing um, a, a style that were, was combining different as different techniques from, from, from two styles or something like this. And he said that he was renegated by the, by the both lineages and he had uh, some problems in, in, in China, in China, yes. Uh, and also in yoga, we can find some stories with uh, Krishna Macharya, for example, and uh, his son, who, which whom had an agreement to not uh, to not learn anyone some mantras. He went in Europe, uh, the Shikachar. He went in Europe. He learned some. The, he learned the mantras to, to to different persons, and also he went to some seminaries in in India. He was doing the same, and he was uh, not let in the house anymore by his father Krishna Machera for I don't know how long. But uh, we can find some uh, we can find some rigid ideas about this, but also we can understand that some practices. Like we have accessed some practices, everyone, each of us from, from this panel has accessed some practices. But in my opinion, the practices that we have accessed and we can expose, and if we are here in, in, on the Zoom, we can bring them together and also we can, we can hi hybrid, put it in the hybrid mode. But also there are some practices that are pure and uh, I think... They are not for anyone, and it's like it's like a school, you know. You can find uh, you, you, if if you if you go deeper and deeper and deeper, it's a language. It's a it's a practice that you can uh, be understandable by few people. You know, we cannot talk in mathematics uh, at some level if we are not mathematicians, but we can make some calculations in a level that we are doing all the same and we are doing the same calculation and we are using the same formulas to do that calculation. But if we go a little bit more deeper into the practice, and this is the key where a teacher has to, 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 to bring it to this hybridization, he has to understand where is the, uh, where is the, the student 
and to give to the student something that is on his language. This is the very important aspect. But <laughs> of course, of course, we can we can reach a point, but there are some uh, the level the, the level that we are perceiving it right now. It's a, I don't know. I think it's a beginner level, but. As far as I practice and I, 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 I've read and so on, there are still some pure practices that are keeping this uh, balance into the spiritual realm. And we have to respect that people that are practicing to that level. And we don't have to disturb this. They are, if, if it's something that they are giving to, they are, they are giving because they are giving the practices at some point in our life, we can receive some practices. But if only they are giving that practice to us, and these are spiritual uh, teachers and uh, guide, guides that can, I don't know, I think they have a very pure practice and they know exactly when to give something more to, to, to ourselves, the people who are a little bit more in the beginner level, because I consider myself a beginner. But from time to time, some teachers are giving me some practices and... I try to to put the practices into my classes, but I feel that I receive a, 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 a strong uh, opposition from my from my students, and that's why I think the hybridization it's to a some uh, some level of the masses. The masses mean people who are the, in the beginner level, but we have to respect non-hybridization of the practices that are pure and uh, they are in the monasteries. They are doing strong efforts and sadhanas to keep our spiritual balance worldwide and in the in the cosmo in the cosmic at the cosmic level fabulous response mm -hmm. fabulous response beautifully covered and i could not agree more thank you <clears throat> we we all i love i love the languaging around speaking to people in their language so that that may be received we we obviously of course do have that one common language which is love And when it comes from that place, it's always, well, in my experience, almost always well received. <laughs> I think always. the most common uh, language of ourselves, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, love is a word misunderstood in uh, nowadays. And I think the only language that can be understood by anyone is the silence. And for me, silence is love. For me, silence is love, and I think uh, where where is silence can be love. Uh, where where not where is not silence cannot cannot be cannot be love, because love is something pure and something that uh, can be manifested in a, in the most purest way only in silence. This is my uh, opinion. I don't know. I agree, <laughs> and and in that silence and stillness, we're able to feel love, not say it. Yes, because in the moment that you say that you love and you feel the love, in that moment you are losing the the, the pure contact with the with the, the love and the silence, because yes. you are disturb, disturbing. But like we know, the cycles of uh, and the yugas and the cycle of the cosmo or cosmic uh, order and uh, the the cycle of our life and uh, the 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 season on is this. Um, transition from one um, this uh, conception and destruction and, and, and this constant movement movement of the of the nature and the life, which sometimes can bring. Uh, happiness and uh, or uh, we have to we have to under uh, and how to be in that mov movement without uh, in silence because that moving is happening the cold is coming the winter is coming the, the summer is coming it's a little bit more uh, 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 the sun is more powerful so we cannot do anything just be in in a silent way, in silent this flow, taking us to this uh, to this uh, manifestation that is happening every day and every since the 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 the, the, the creation is is uh, is here. 
I think this is the most important to understand in this hybridization of the different spiritual practices and science, mm -hmm. science also and the technology. <clears throat> Absolutely. Dr. Lee, mm -hmm. would you like to speak into that, please, honey? <clears throat> or, or yeah. I am just so enjoying the silence <laughs> in myself. Thank you, Cosmin. Thank you for bringing that in. And Cosmin, I really so appreciate your purity in also wanting to uh, keep the purity in this view of hybridization. You know, yes, we are evolving, and we are always wanting to integrate new technologies and new techniques. But your, your comment about the keeping the purity that some of the souls are meant to keep that perhaps in the mountains are, is just really cogent. So thank you for that. And I would like to ask you that in your process and your journey of integrating sort of new technologies, you have met with some res resistance. So what were some of the um, techniques? Because you are so steeped in your ancient traditional wisdom. So what were some of the technologies that you have tried to integrate to hybridize your own practice and the people who come to you for these uh, teachings? Um. First, when I begin with yoga, I begin with the very physical yoga, and I was very strict in my practice, and I was looking to the younger practitioners and other practitioners, like, uh, look, this, or that, and uh, I was very, a little bit uh, egotic in my, uh, in my uh, uh, experience and the way of perceiving the yoga. Uh, after I, I went to, I, I discovered... Um, a teacher, he was discovering me that is coming from Madras, Chennai from now, and it's called Sudha Dharma Mandalam. And he gave me a book, and the book was Sudha Raja Yoga, Pure Raj Yoga. And there in that book, there were some techniques of perceiving the, the yoga practices very universal. Like when you practice something, for example, you are a teacher, you are a practitioner, and you, and you, and you practice something, uh, <clears throat> that practice is changing you. So you, you perceive that changing in yourself. In the moment that you, change, you perceive the changing in yourself, you become attached to that changing. But the idea of changing is that all the time the things are changing. So you cannot be attached because today you're doing a Chaturanga or a Shavasana and it's different from the yesterday Shavasana. So I understand that the practices are meant to come exactly in the moment that you need it. For example, that teacher that gave me Sudra Yoga, I'm in contact with him. After that, I was in Rishikesh and suddenly one of the best meditation teachers in the world was asking me, can I sit with you at the table because there are no, no free places anymore. So I said yes, and I uh, recognized him, and I realized that he is one of the teachers. And now I'm 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 uh, I'm studying with him. So I realized that the the practices and the way that you are teaching are coming natural. And if you practice something, there is a point where you have to quit that practice. You have to leave that practice and 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 keep that uh, fruit that you, it's like you're making agriculture and you have a fruit and you eat that fruit and that fruit is giving you a sensation and the taste. After, you don't have to eat that fruit anymore. If, if you want it, you can eat it. But here is a catch because you will know the taste of the fruit and you pro, you'll, you'll project the taste of the fruit in your mind. And that first experience is not available anym anymore. Of course, there are some techniques that you can have the taste of the apple, like fresh every time, and you can erase something, but these are a very, uh, very old uh, uh, tantric meditations. But to come back to your, to your techniques, uh, to uh, what you have asked me, I think the non-attachment uh, non to the <coughs> practice, non-attachment non-attachment doesn't mean to not practice 
and doesn't mean to practice too much. It's, it's the sensation and the fruit that you are experiencing in the practice. That is changing yourself and your perception to the practice. That experience, not the information, not the practice itself. It's exactly the experience that will change the perception of the new practices. And maybe you can, you can go deeper and you can perceive the same practice differently. So there are many, many ways of doing that. And this is what I have been discovering uh, during these years. I, I'm practicing yoga since 2012 and more, my not so, so grounded. But during the, I, I, I've been passing to many conflicts with myself, to many conflicts with myself when I was practicing only Ashtanga and I was observing that, uh, that conflicts. I was having a lot of conflicts when I was uh, uh, experiencing different, uh, uh, in a point that I was uh, having some big conflicts inside myself. So the fight was inside because there is nowhere in no Upanishad that the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the practices uh, has to be like this in conflict. So the conflict was in myself and I was trying to observe why the practices I are in, in conflict. And I was observing that I was attached to that practice. And I was discovering some techniques that were leading myself to, uh, some, to, to a little bit more, more freedom because the practice has to give you freedom. If you practice Ashtanga all your life and you say, oh, my anger is not good, there is no freedom. There is a very rigid uh, 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 aspect of, uh, of seeing these uh, practices. And also today I'm practicing the Ashtanga when I feel that I, I need a little bit more flow. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing anger when I feel that I'm too flowly and I, have, I am too flow, uh, <laughs> I flow too much. When I need, uh, I, I need a little bit more energy, I practice breathing, uh, practice, breathing uh, exercises and Kriyas and so on. When I feel that uh, I have to, I want, I want to go because meditation, it's like a good, it's, it's, it's that, uh, that good wine that you are tasting like uh, to some time, like uh, you, you taste a very good and fine wine uh, or you have a good relationship with someone and you met someone that is very rare, you know, Me uh, something that when I need meditation is because I need to go a little bit more further. I, I, I'm not using meditation every day. I'm using a combination and I, I cannot say that it's something that is like a pattern. Yeah. Some, it's exactly how I feel it. It's exactly how it's coming. It's exactly what I need in that moment of, of, the, of the day or I don't know. It's, yeah. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. It's oh, something yes, more it's, internally. Yes, it's beautifully profound, personal. And then just very quickly to round up, how do you see this transformation of the self, the many selves of many people uh, and this hybridization and this merging, this sacred marriage of the, the past and the science uh, of uh, these methodologies uh, awaken humanity as a whole? Do you have a vision of that? Um, like every process, for example, if we... Uh, if we take in mind, because I was professional handball player and I, I was, I, I know how to, I would, how to deal with this periodization. It's like a periodization. You know, you take a child, you go to seven years and he is learning to play and learning the, 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 the rules of the game and so on. So now the, the rules of the, our life that were somewhere in the consciousness already available are changing our life. So uh, how, the, how the hybridization and spiritual and scientific methodologies were going to change the, the world, I think uh, to the mass level will going to be a huge shift. Also will going to be a big conflict because the people will going to uh, uh, make the opposite movement to keep their old patterns alive. And I think also it will going to be uh, a big conflict wor worldwide. But the conflict will not will be like a physical conflict. It will be more internal conflict. And here is the place where the healers has to come because uh, the people will be more and more depressive, anxiety. We'll get more in contact with this uh, mental 
mental diseases. And here is our our uh, our um, our role here to come. And I think we're gonna last few years, and after the opposition and the the strong opposition of the of the masses will uh, will uh, will change. And we'll see. We're gonna see like in four or five years some uh, some beautiful light around us. But we cannot change anything to the mass level to the base without a conflict, because that conflict is the is the is giving you the experience. That conflict is giving you exactly what you need to pass. Some people get this conflict through the meditation, like I was, or to the to the practices. I was having a conflict inside because of my practices. And some people are going to have this uh, conflict a little bit more different, like about the importance of the water the crystal alive water we are our bodies like 70 percent of the of the water and usually what is happening at the moment also with this like fierce fire that is rising within people more addictions more mental confusion comes in because people want to eat it up or or drink it up or or whatever it's very 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 noisy out there in the field. So it's quite important to just come with the technological solutions which are already available, uh, biofields, biophotons, working with biophotons, using the, uh, um, the, 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 the crystals, but also coming from beyond. And if you shape shift into the awareness of a pure master and creator, you can see that basically if, if everything is connected to this plasma field, we can literally, from that self-mastery, start manifesting And passion, which is the fuel for the human body, literally, you can you can program the water, you can program the bless the food that you eat, whatever. You don't need even much if you're connected to your passion, to your joy. If you're good with uh, following innovations and bringing them forward, if you're good with singing, whatever, uh, in a way, beings and masters. Because the more we want to, uh, uh, we wonder, the more we want to. Uh, access and share with, with humanity, the universe gives us more because it just asks and it is given. And uh, from 2017, what I know and see, like the light already has won. There is no it's... turning back. So only the darkness now, it's, it's just the, the time kind of zone because of the three density in a way. It just needs to a little bit unravel in here. But uh, it's important to speak our truth in this lifetime to have a higher uh, higher capacity of awareness of what is going on and they become uh, like the a little bit like the victims of those uh, dark forces that want to harvest uh, their essence and uh, literally create their own kind of timelines where they can uh, propel their kind of functions so um, the more we share the more we work on ourselves ourselves um, as well because it's a never-ending journey and the evolution is uh, everywhere like in entire uh, planet instead of like uh, having uh, wars at the moment there should be like a music of that will um, equalize the energy of the entire like fierceness that is happening Absolutely. I love your passion, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love you for your shares Thank with you. us today. Thank, Thank you. So um, Cosman and Aga, we have a certificate that we'd like to share with you as a token of our gratitude into this beautiful summit for being outstanding. Thank you from our heart to yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Very, it is very, very this uh, fear atmosphere that is around us, which is, which is normal in a, in a period like this. 
and which is necessary for the evolving of the of the situation. I think I think all, all this fear, like uh, Aga said, all this fear is coming out from from the people, and it's like a cleansing process. I think mm. uh, in the in the Sanskrit uh, in the, um, the in the tradition, not the Hindu, like the Indian tradition, um, this this virus you can find also in the um, Catholic tradition. Uh, on the 15th of May, it was uh, Saint Corona, and uh, in the in the tradition, uh, in the let's call it Sanskrit tradition, we can find a, a demon, uh, Corona. The name is the demon is Corona, and there is a story with Corona in the Brahm. Uh, and uh, which uh, Karana came and um, uh, saw the Brahm like he's meditating, doing his sadhana, and uh, ask, uh, uh, ask 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 Brahm uh, what what we, we what I can do for you because you are very penitent and you are doing the practice and so on. And he said, uh, I want to I want to clean the the, the world uh, uh, for from suffering. And that, and in that moment, Karana uh, went in the world and. Uh, uh, clean the world like a virus, like a disease. So what we have to understand that we cannot change the world. We cannot change all the people. Not all the people want to to be to be to be helped. And all this process, like in Bhagavad Gita, there is a fight. Like all these big scriptures are fighting a, a fight between good and bad. But the good and bad is the is the movement process of the life. We cannot say that we are good, we are bad, and we cannot say that the virus is good and is bad. And I think we, 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 we just have to channel this experience in a way that we can give this uh, uh, understanding like, like in uh, performance sports, like in, in step by step, little by little, and we have to, this is our, 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 um, uh, our purpose here, I think. Mm. To to create to facilitate the the, the 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 expression of the of of this new new way of perceiving the world or the reality. I couldn't agree and, more. And I think it's 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 a good way. It's a it's it's a new fresh start for everyone, even for us. We it's a, it's a it's a fresh start for everyone, and everything will gonna almost everything will gonna be changed. And all this suffering is the it's the way which the happiness and the joy and the love will gonna manifest it uh, will be manifested in, uh, in in the future and not too too many years we're gonna see a lot of positive changes. Yeah, they're not yeah. too distant future. Yeah, no distant future. Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, and our beautiful sister Aga. Thank you so much for for joining us at the World Parliament of Spirituality. I've got um, so many beautiful gems you shared. You are light embodied. You are extraordinary and pure joy and passion. Your thank you. Remember, for... uh, remember that everything that you you see is just a mirror of something that is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very very thank much. You so much. We are entering a new era that uh, we think that we came in the like a foggy me memory uh, soon. <laughs> uh, Brother yes. Cosmin was uh, in tradition. Uh, what I see for the future is it's already happening in, 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 in many locations, but basically churches will be used for unification of people like teaching the yoga classes, ecstatic dances, um, because people need to, uh, people will wake up that the God that they teach about in Catholic tradition is literally our, our outside of ourselves and trying to pray. Dr. Lee, thank you. 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 Thank Cosmin you. and Aga. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you.